Signal R and Blazor WebAssembly. It seems like a perfect match and in today's video I'm going to show you how to send notifications from your backend using Signal R to a client implemented with Blazor WebAssembly. I'm going to start from an empty ASP.NET Core Web API and the default Blazor WebAssembly application that you get scaffolded out of the box. If you start both of the applications, you're going to see the empty Swagger UI for the backend because we don't have any endpoints and in the Blazor client, you're going to be welcomed with the home component, a counter component where you can increment the count by clicking the button and it's going to refresh the value on the user interface and the fetch data component which gets the data from a JSON file and then renders it on the screen. So let's see how we're going to use SignalR to connect the Blazor client with the backend. The first thing I need to do is to add the required services in my backend project for working with SignalR. So I'm just going to call add SignalR, then I need to define my hub which is the central component that my clients will connect to. So let's call this the notifications hub and I'm going to create this class. It's going to implement the hub base class, and this is a class exposed by SignalR, which you can use to implement messaging between your server, which is your hub, and your client. The hub base class isn't strongly typed, so what I like to do is to define a client interface. Let's call this the iNotification client, and this interface will contain the methods that I can call on my SignalR client. So in our case, this is going to be the Blazor application. So let's define an asynchronous method and let's just call it receive notification. It's going to have one argument, which is going to be the message that we're going to send from the server to our client. And then the client is going to render these messages on the screen. So how do you make a hub strongly typed? Well, you have to use the generic variant of the hub base class and you specify your client interface. Now we can only call the methods that are exposed on the iNotification client inside of the notifications hub. So I'm going to override the onConnected async method and I'm going to add some additional code inside, but I'm first going to take care of the base call to the unconnected async. And now what I want to do is as soon as a new client connects to my notifications hub, I want to send them a message back. So here's what I'm going to do. I can reference the client's property to access my SignalR clients and I can talk to a specific client by calling the client method. It requires a connection ID and I can access the connection ID from the hub caller context. It contains the connection ID property, which is the client that connected to our Blazor hub right now. So let's use this to access the specific client and I'm just going to send them a message back and you'll see that I have access to the receive notification method. This is because I'm using a strongly typed client and the methods that I define on the client interface are exposed inside of my hub. So let's call the receive notification method and here's what I'm going to send to my client. So thank you for connecting and I'm going to send them an identifier which I'm going to pull from the hub caller context and notice that we have access to the claims principle in the user property. So this is going to contain the information about the authenticated client. This is important because now I can use this to access the identity and get the name of this client which is actually going to match the user identifier. So when a new client connects to the notifications hub, I'm just going to send them a welcome message back saying thank you for connecting. The next thing I need to do is to configure my hub with my web API. So you do that by saying map hub and you specify your hub class. So this is our notifications hub and I also need to say which route on my API is going to be used to connect to the hub. I'm just going to say notifications and this is all you need to do to expose a SignalR hub from your backend. Now I'm going to take this a step further and add another class which is going to be a background service. So let's call this server time notifier and I'm going to implement it using the background service which behind the scenes implements the iHosted service which is a way to implement background services with your ASP.NET Core applications. So to start out, I'm going to define a few dependencies that I'm going to need. So I'll define a private static read only time span, which is going to represent how often I'm going to send the notification to my signal R clients. I'm going to call it period and let's give it a value of time span from seconds 
and let's say every five seconds. Then I'm going to inject an I logger of server time notifier and we'll call it logger. Let's inject this from the constructor and I'm going to need one more service which is going to be my signal R hub context. So I need to inject the I hub context interface and because I'm using the strongly typed hub, I also need to use the generic variant of the I hub context. The first argument is my hub type, so notifications hub, and the second argument is my signal R client. So this is the I notification client and let's just call it context. I'm going to inject this from the constructor and now we can use them in the execute async method to send messages to my clients. So I'm going to create a periodic timer using the time span that I just defined and the timer is going to execute every five seconds. So periodic timer, I'm going to give it a period and here's what I can do. I'm going to define a while loop and I'm going to say while stopping token is cancellation requested or rather while it's not requested and we're going to await on the timer and wait for the next tick. I'm also going to pass it the cancellation token. This is going to execute my loop every five seconds and inside of the loop I'm going to just add an information log that I'm running the service. So let's say executing and let's call it service and let's give it the time. And I'm going to pass name of server time notifier and let's grab the time in a variable. So date time and I'm going to use date time now and I'm going to use that as the second argument and then I'm going to use my hub context to send a message to my client which is going to be my blazor WebAssembly application so I'm going to say clients and right now I'm going to send the message to all of my connected clients but later I'm going to show you how to scope this to a single user and we're just going to call the receive notification method and the content is just going to be server time equals and let's just use the date time object. Of course because this is asynchronous I'm going to await it and we have a background service that's going to send a notification to our clients every five seconds. To register this background service you need to go to your program class and you need to say builder services add hosted service and just specify your background service and then it's going to be started when your backend application starts up. I'm also going to take care of any potential course issues which stands for cross origin resource sharing. So I'm going to say add course to add the course services and I'm going to define my course policy. So I'm going to say use course and then I can define my policy. So I'll say policy, allow any header, allow any method and allow any origin. So this will just allow any application to connect to my backend to avoid course issues. Of course, in production, you're going to configure the policy to match your specific client application. So now let's move to the client side application, which is implemented using Blazor WebAssembly and add the SignalR connection on that side. I'm going to start by installing the NuGet package for connecting to SignalR. I'm looking for the SignalR client library and I'm going to install the version that matches my current Blazor WebAssembly version. So I'm going to use 7.0.7 .7, and I'm going to install this library. With the SignalR client installed, I can go ahead and open up my homepage component, which is defined inside the index razor file. I'm not going to dive into Blazor fundamentals in this video, but let's talk about a few pieces that are part of a Blazor component. We have the route of our component at the top, so we designate this component as a page with the route of just a dash. So this is our home page. Then we have a page title element which defines the title of our page in the browser and we have our markup which just defines the content of our page. Now if I want to define some code on my client side, I'll do that by creating a code block and then I can define my code inside. I'm going to define a private field which is going to represent my hub connection to the signal R hub. Let's call this the hub connection. Then I'm going to define a list which is also going to be read only and it's going to be a list of strings and it's going to contain my messages. So let's initialize it to an empty list and I'm going to override the onInitialized async method. This is the method that our application will call when this component is initialized. So we can add some additional steps inside like connecting to our SignalR hub. So I'm going to use my hub connection 
and create a new hub connection builder. I'm going to define my URL, which is the address of my backend API. And I'm just going to hard code this to the route to my SignalR hub. And this is the path to my API. And then the path to the hub is going to match what we exposed in our hub configuration. And then I can just say build, and this is going to obtain a connection to my SignalR hub. I can also use the hub to define callbacks for my client side methods by saying on, and I can define a delegate that's going to represent the methods on my client side. And we're going to give it the same name as we did in our client interface. So the method name is receive notification. And then the body of this method is just an action accepting a string from the backend. So I'm going to use this string to just add it to the list of messages. So let's add this to the list of messages. And then we need to tell Blazor to refresh the user interface. So we're going to do this by saying invoke async and pass it the state has changed method. Invoke async is a way for me to call our client side method and state has changed will tell my component that it needs to render some changes to the user interface. And the last thing that I need to do here is to actually start my hub connection so I'm going to say hub connection start async. So this will take care of connecting my client to this SignalR hub and we're going to start to receive messages from our backend. And now let's render them from the user interface. I'm going to say here messages from the server are going to live down here and let's define an unordered list which is going to contain my elements. And I'm going to use a for each loop to iterate over my messages, which are inside of my messages list and just render the message as a list item. So list item, and I can say the content of the list item is the current message in the messages list. I'm also going to take care of properly disposing of the hub connection. So I'm going to implement the I async disposable interface in my component and let's implement the missing members, which is just the dispose async method. And what I'm going to do inside is check if the hub connection is not null. So if hub connection is not null, then we're just going to await hub connection dispose async. And this will take care of freeing up any resources held by the hub connection. So now let's start the application and see if our connection between the Blazor client and the ASP.NET Core Web API is working correctly. So here's my client interface, and you can see that we got back the thank you for connecting message from the notifications hub, which is sent when we connect to the hub. And now we are receiving a message from the background job every five seconds telling us what the current server time is. So the connection from the Blazor client application and our server through Signal R is working, however, it has the disadvantage that we are sending this message as a broadcast message to all clients. It's much more powerful if we are able to send a message to a specific client. And I'm going to show you how to do this now. I'm going to start by adding a NuGet package for adding JSON web token authentication. So I'm going to search for JWT bearer and I'm going to install Microsoft ASP.NET Core authentication JWT bearer. Now let's register the required services in our program class. So I'm going to say builder services add authorization and let's also add the authentication services. So add authentication. I'm going to specify the authentication scheme to be JWT bearer defaults and use this authentication scheme. And I'm also going to say add JWT bearer. Now this takes care of registering the services with dependency injection, but we also need to add the authorization middleware. So I'm going to say use authorization. Now this only takes care of wiring up the required services and the middleware, but to actually secure my SignalR hub, I need to decorate it with the authorize attribute. And now anyone that wants to connect to my SignalR hub will need to pass in a valid JSON web token. And this is how you are able to identify specific users connecting to your SignalR hub. There's a nice command line utility with the .NET CLI that allows you to create a JSON web token for testing purposes, and you need to call .NET user JWTs and then create. I'm also going to specify the name argument and pass in some random GUID so that I can identify a user using this GUID. Now, in reality, 
this is going to be your subclaim on a proper JSON web token, which is going to be your user identifier. So if I execute this command, it's going to create a new JSON web token. Here is the content of this JSON web token. And let's inspect what we have inside of this JSON web token. I'm going to paste the token on the JWT website and you can see the content of the payload. So you'll notice that we have our subclaim which matches the GUID that I specified. The audience of this token matches the URLs of your web API. And one more thing that the user JWT's utility does is in your backend project, it's going to update the app settings development JSON file and add an authentication section. This is going to integrate with the authentication options and you'll see that it specifies the valid audiences and the valid issuer so that your JSON web token is checked when somebody connects to the API. And now what we need to do is to update our hub connection on the Blazor client to include the JSON web token. We need to update the call to the with URL method to configure the HTTP connection options. So I'm going to access the options and you'll notice that we have a property called access token provider. This is how you can set an access token for your SignalR client. So I'm going to give it a value of a simple function that's just going to say task from result, the argument is going to be a nullable string because this is what this method accepts. And the value is just going to be the JSON web token that we got from the command line utility. In a real application, you're never going to be hard coding the access token like this, but you're actually going to get it from the currently authenticated user. But I hope this is enough for you to understand what you need to do. Before I start the application, I'm going to set a breakpoint in the onConnected async method so that we see what is going on. And I'm going to make one adjustment to the code inside of my server time notifier background service. Instead of sending this message to all of my clients, I'm actually going to try to access a specific client. Now I can either use a connection ID, which I don't have, or I can access the user. And this is going to try to match a user by the user identifier. For the value of the user ID, I'm going to pass the value that I passed to my JSON web token. Again, I'm hard coding things, but you would be pulling this from the user identifier that you have in your database. Now, how Blazor accesses this user identifier is using the default user ID provider class. And let's check out the implementation. So what it does is accesses the claims principle on the hub connection and gets the claim with the name of name identifier and tries to get the value. So this is going to match the sub claim on my JSON web token. And this is how SignalR knows which user it should send the message to. This also takes care of if a single user has multiple connections. For example, we connect to the same client in more than one tab and then SignalR will take care of sending the message to the correct clients. So let's start the application and let's see what's going to happen. So the application started and we hit the breakpoint in our notifications hub. You'll notice that we were able to pass the authorization. Otherwise, we would never even hit this breakpoint. So our JSON web token is working correctly. And you can see that we have the connection ID here. But more importantly, we have the value of the user's subclaim or the user's identifier in the context user identity name property. So now we're going to propagate this message to our client and we're going to start receiving messages from the server. So here's what we are getting from the server. You can see that the user identifier is properly sent from our SignalR hub to the client. We are receiving messages and our authentication is working. If we did not specify an access token, then we would get an 401 unauthorized error. And I also have the same application open in two more tabs. So you'll see if I switch tabs that they are all receiving messages from the server. And this is because they are connected using the user identifier. SignalR is able to route the message to multiple connected clients based on the user identifier. So if I refresh this, you'll see that they are successfully receiving messages from the server. If you want to learn more about SignalR fundamentals, take a look at this video here and make sure to smash the like and subscribe buttons on your way out. And until next time, stay awesome.